In the microbiology laboratory, we work with complex microbial communities. In fact, this image here is a gram stain of some feces. In it, you can see a highly rich and diverse community comprised of different gram-positive and negative bacteria, rods, cocci, and spirochetes. So when we're trying to culture these organisms in the lab, how do we target it? And can we tell these species apart on the agar plates? One of the tools that we can use are selective and differential media. Selective media is very useful for isolating particular bacterial species or genera. It contains substances which are inhibitory towards other bacteria, allowing us to focus in on only the ones we're interested in. In this example here, we have three different bacterial species, a gram-positive cocci, gram-negative rods, and a gram-positive rod. And you can see when we plate those onto this selective media, only the gram-negative rods are able to grow, forming these green colonies. Differential media exploit the physiological properties of each species in order to produce a unique colony morphology. So with these same three bacteria here, when we plate them on this media, you can see that our gram-positive cocci gives us these yellow colonies, our gram-negative rod gives us these blue colonies, and our gram-positive rod results in red colonies. So how is this useful? Well, first of all, it facilitates presumptive identification. On differential media, we had a pretty good idea of what organism we're dealing with just based on the colony morphology and color. Using selective media, we can rapidly determine which organisms we aren't dealing with. For instance, some media is used to select four gram-positive bacteria, and so we can be fairly certain that we aren't dealing with a gram-negative. This presumptive identification decreases laboratory turnaround time in order to ID our bacteria, which is a critical step in any diagnostic or research application. Finally, selective and differential media are really useful for reducing contamination. Um, so particularly in a research context, it allows targeted studies. It allows us to isolate only the bacteria we're interested in from our research samples. One familiar example of a media that's both selective and differential is McConkie agar. McConkie contains bile salts and crystal violet, which are inhibitory towards gram-positive bacteria, allowing the growth of only gram-negative enterics. It contains a differential ingredient, lactose, which allows lactose-fermenting bacteria um, to produce a pH change, resulting in bright pink colonies. On the right, you can see this McConkie agar plate with a growth of E. coli, these nice bright pink lactose fermenting colonies. And then we have our lactose non-fermenter, Pseudomonas, with clear colonies. Here we have mannitol salt agar, also selective and differential. Mannitol salt agar contains high concentrations of sodium chloride, which allows only the growth of halophilic organisms and it differentiates based on an organism's ability to ferment mannitol. On the top, you can see Staphylococcus aureus producing these nice bright yellow colonies, and on the bottom, we have non-mannitol fermenting Staphylococcus epidermidis. I hope you found this brief explanation of selective and differential media helpful, and if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below.